Welcome back to Balancing Chaos with Kelly and Gretchen. And today we're going to be talking about, what are we talking about again, Kelly? Gun violence prevention. Gun violence prevention. And I don't mean to sound snarky when I say that because it's important, but it's just, we're going to talk about it until we don't have to talk about it anymore. It's basically how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I think the important point of today's episode is to kind of discuss well, some facts, first and foremost, but also just some evolution of uh, what I've been coping with. Because every week since San- um, Park Lent, I've been on an emotional roller coaster to the point where today I feel like I can finally talk about it. Okay. So where so where should we start? So we've done we've done a couple episodes on guns. And a couple weeks ago, we were on vacation. We ran the one with Sarah Karen, um, the Sandy Hook survivor. And one of the things that I actually added to the show notes on that rerun was... The fact that since we had recorded that, there have actually been two states that have passed um, some new legislation, which I feel like is a tiny little baby step forward. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was Florida and Vermont. And so just real quick, I'm going to go over what they've done. So Vermont signed uh, their law. There has four main components. It raises the legal age to purchase a firearm from 18 to 21. Mandatory background checks for private gun transfers. So if I was going to sell a gun to you, you would still have to have a background check, which is a big loophole. Bans the possession and sale of large capacity ammunition ammunition feeding devices, which means more than 10 rounds of ammunition for a long gun, more than 15 rounds of ammunition for a handgun, and bans the possession of bump stocks. And bump stocks are the things that were added to the gun for Las Vegas. So that was Vermont. And Vermont's pretty, Vermont's like the most liberal, mm-hmm. you know, democratic state in the country. And that's not a that's not an opinion it's been found in fact so that's that but the other one is that florida did it too which is not the most liberal state in the country so theirs includes raising the legal age for gun purchases to 21 a waiting period of three days and allows the arming of school personnel who are not full-time teachers so that last one's sort of like eh, but it's like allows you to arm your security guards i guess um and creates risk protection orders, which allows a court to prohibit a violent or mentally ill individual from purchasing or possessing a firearm or any other weapon and allows law enforcement to seize firearms when a person has detained, been detained under the Baker Act. So those are a couple of things that Florida has done. So there has been like a tiny little step forward in this million mile journey we have to march. So I did want to add that. So mm, that's, that's the positive. one little positive thing. So Kelly, tell us about your tell us your story, Kelly. So I think that it's important for people to know that I haven't, this has not been my life's work to focus on gun violence prevention, nor did I even realize what a problem it was. To be honest, I've really had my head in the cla- in this, in the clouds, <laughs> sand, wherever they were. Not in reality. How about that? Um, so when Parkland happened, I seriously s- said, another one? Really? I can't believe, what are we doing? Why haven't we done anything? And I forced myself to actually watch all the videos that were circulating on social media of the kids dying in the classrooms because I just felt like, and I heard, I hear people saying, and I do it too, I protect myself all the time from emotional tragedies and you know I do it. So I'm I'm not judging anyone for doing it because I definitely do it. But for this one, I thought, no, those kids, they didn't ask they didn't have the option of avoiding watching their friends getting gunned down or their teachers right in front of them. So I'm going to watch it because I felt like to get as mad as I needed to to be to fight this, I had to really feel it emotionally. You so, were almost like like you were called to bear witness. Yes. I almost, I felt like I I absolutely had no choice but to watch it. So I I watched all of them. I was real it was horribly sad. And then almost immediately I started seeing Uh, Facebook memes and reshares from people I love that were so derogatory toward the kids who had just experienced such a tragedy. And it really called everything that I believed into question, specifically religion, because these people who were the loudest with the loudest voices, and we had Sandy Karen on. she Sarah Karen. Sarah Karen. Sorry, sorry. (laughs) Sandy Karen. That's a different person sex ed but um (laughs) um sand 
Sarah. Sarah Karen. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. We had Sarah Karen on. She said that, um, you know, we have to make our voices louder. So the loudest voices were these were people who I know to be very religious and um, have a strong faith. And it, it was the final straw in hypo- religious hypocrisy for me. Because, you know, I've talked about on this podcast openly in our very first episode that, you know, I believe in God. My personal relationship with God is strong. I believe in the Bible, but I don't believe in being discriminatory, racist, homophobic, anti-women, sexist, on and on, which often comes with religion. And then I remember one of our listeners kind of, he didn't criticize me, but he... He said, well, it's not, you, you said all religions, which I do have to be careful with. I didn't realize that the religion I was in was ex- conservative and extreme in views as it is. And this, this gun issue has kind of brought that to light for me, that there are religions out there where that support believing in God and having a personal relationship in God and also loving same-sex couples, for example. Can I, can I so my yeah. analogy, because Kelly and I have talked a lot about this, mm-hmm. um, my religion hasn't changed. <laughs> but my thing is that I always, the way it has sounded as the observer and friend is it's like if somebody came to me and said, oh, my God, I love ice cream. I love chocolate ice cream. Chocolate ice cream is the best. I mean, yeah, every time I eat it, I get horrible cramping and I get so sick. But, oh, my God, I love chocolate ice cream. So, so OK, I get cramped up. And like all of a sudden, you're like, well, you know, have you ever tried vanilla? Maybe it's the chocolate and not the ice cream. (laughs) Yeah. And then someone trying vanilla and being like, oh, I get to love ice cream and not feel sick to my stomach and conflicted every time I eat it. Yeah. So we're so we've been talking about all the flavors of ice cream that there are in our area. (laughs) Yeah. So I I did. I I became very upset, um, almost almost distraught to be honest I mean Gretchen knows because she's been um, witnessing this behind the scenes but I just this this issue I couldn't understand because guns aren't even in the Bible (laughs) so Bible predates guns yes so I so that but but that doesn't matter because I will say that there are a lot of people who say it's our God-given right to own guns which always puzzles me because as you said there are no guns in the bible right so there first of all there's no guns in the bible the other thing is that i the last time i got fired up about my religion and the conflict between religion and politics which uh, you know i think this is a common challenge you saw the story about the the um house chaplain and the senate chaplain yes, right yes right so I think there's a common challenge. I'm not the first person to have experienced this, but the the most recent one was in our state of Maine. Um, there was a bill to there was a um, a question on the ballot to expand Medicaid, and the way the question read was, "Do you support providing access to health care for a family of four earning twenty two thousand dollars or less annually, or a single individual earning eleven thousand dollars or less annually?" You, my husband, who actually is a registered Republican, um, when he and I got out from the voting booths, we were talking about the questions, and he said, "Oh my gosh, did you see that question? It was like, if you're a family of four and you're making twenty two thousand, should you have access to health insurance? Yeah, of course. I mean, how would they pay for it? How, should they have access to Medicaid? How would they pay for it otherwise? And so he's a reasonable person with a heart, and he votes yes." Then I turn around and find out all these people who are strong, strong, extremely strong Christians and highly religious who have voted it down. And it just it it's just misaligned for me. The Bible does not speak like this. I mean, wouldn't Jesus Ugh. give them health care? Right. Exactly. Straight up for free and I make you vote on it. Right. So <laughs> I so that was the last time I was mad. But then I still was like, OK, you know, people want people to work. Although these people are clearly working. You're not getting 20,000 just handed to you. But anyway, I still was able to rationalize that. But when the same group of people came about with complete opposition against any kind of gun reform, I, I can't get behind anymore because how are you, you know, if we look at um, women's rights and access to contraception and we look at abortion and you are you say you're pro-life 
okay, fine. I, I'll, I, I, I respect that and I support it. But then you turn around and you're not pro-gun reform. You can't be pro-life and not pro-life. Although they say the same thing about Democrats. Like you can't be pro-life and anti, I mean, and pro-abortion. Whatever. But the thing is, is that this ultimately just... Yeah, but you don't get accidentally edge. aborted in a classroom. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> so, so anyway... 15 so, people at a time. So I did, I did decide to um, take... A break from religion for a while. Um, not that I, I still believe in God. This has nothing to do with me and my relationship with God and what I've always believed in the Bible and everything, but organized religion. Um, we've Gretchen has made me a spreadsheet. She's done a ton of research. <laughs> oh, we've done a deep dive into different types of religions and what they believe, churches in the area, reviews, etc. It's been very helpful. Um, I started listening to this podcast, Liturgist Podcast. It's 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 been a godsend to me. Well, I so I looked at that was a recommendation from a friend who had messaged me privately on Twitter for that. So thank you, friend Molly. And you sent me one about um, body image, mm-hmm. which was really good. I actually ordered the woman's book. And I haven't started it yet. But I like while she was talking, I went and ordered the book on Kindle. But then I looked at, you know, meet the host. And it was super interesting to see who they were for hosts because one is a musician Mm -hmm. and one is a scientist but also a christian and like had this long weird path to where he is so i was like these are kelly's people here Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. this is someone who can be like no i believe in science and wellness and public health and static evidence-based statistics and Mm -hmm. you know all of that and also i also believe in this other thing which is god you know so it seemed like a good match well they had a um homosexual I think he was a pastor on and they did the in it was in the evangelicalism um episode and he said exactly how I feel. He's so grateful for the upbringing in the church and he I his religion was probably similar to mine and he was and he was um raised similar to me. Um and so he's he's very grateful for the fundamental teachings, you know, being kind you know, generous, loving, like these basic right. beliefs. Um, but he had to separate himself from that conservative of a religion because it just obviously, once he, once he realized he was a homosexual, it doesn't really fit with that level of conservatism. But he said it's sad because he so appreciates the upbringing, but um, he feels so lonely now because there are so few people within religion who do promote equality and there's still like a power structure within religion and so I, I I don't know the podcast has been really great if anyone's struggling with this I highly recommend it it's it's really helped me through this religious aspect of the guns which again the guns I don't know how it's it's and this is my problem with politics in general is that if you believe if you don't want abortion and you don't want same-sex marriage then you have you, you you're a Republican and therefore you're just gonna strongly support every Republican viewpoint that's what I'm seeing. And I'm not I'm not saying everyone does this. I mean, don't get me wrong, but that's what I'm seeing. And it upsets me so much that that's kind of how polarized we become. And I can see how it happens because I've been now called a uh, crazy liberal. I mean, I've been attacked. My own family has, you know, been quite upset with me at times about this gun issue. And I say, fine. So I'm so mad about it. I'm like, fine, I guess I'm going to be a, a liberal then. If, if that's how, if this is how we're going to play. So I think this is how we become so polarized is that it all it takes is one issue for me it was the guns for someone else maybe it was same-sex marriage for someone else maybe it's all this racist um language that we've been hearing every day i don't know what the issue is but i think more and more people are saying like fine if you're going to attack me for not agreeing with this then and you're going to call me a crazy derogatory liberal you know whatever derogatory term you're going to call me which is what i've been called then fine i guess i'm going to be a liberal yeah, which is not to say that calling someone a liberal is derogatory. It's the intent in which it's said. No, no, I'm saying I yeah. I put derogatory yes. as just the the modifier the modifier for what I whatever. She's they not inserted. a derogatory liberal. No, someone's choosing to use yes. liberal as a derogatory term. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> oh my gosh. So anyway, so there's that. And then the other thing I did is, so I got accused because I was so passionate about this. I got accused of um, being brainwashed by liberal media which is another 
whole, we could do a whole topic on that, how dangerous this messaging is about the media being completely false, which is not true. The media is put in place to protect us from the government so that they don't make these decisions without us knowing. Except for the White House Correspondents' Dinner just happened and somebody and a journalist said it is not the media's job to determine whether to, to talk about the president's whether the president's lying or not or something and someone was like no that's exactly what the exactly. media is for it was so weird it's so weird it's- I, I find it totally creepy and weird and like everything that that comedian said was 100 percent accurate she didn't comment on she commented the only appearance she commented on was um were men was not commenting on the woman and everything she said was true like the part with you love you love him because he's making you money because the more you have to report the more views you get which is totally true mm-hmm. okay oh sidebar I, Sorry. no i mean the media issue is 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 a, it's a major concern for me because even people i love again who i've never heard make these comments are constantly saying oh with well, the media it's all a lie it's not a lie in fact this mess this is exactly what people want us to believe so that they can go do whatever they want and then citizens won't react and meanwhile while that comedian was speaking uh the president was having a rally and during his rally he mentioned hispanics and the whole room booed and while he did that his former campaign manager was behind him doing the white power hand shot hand sign to the audience but that hasn't been covered because liberal media it's uh, it's it's really terrifying and i think that if anyone just took some time i mean anyone who's not already fired up about it but just took one issue and really did a deep dive like i did with the guns <laughs> we'd all be horrified and that's how i i mean and i really believe so after parkland i went through all this i mean i was dealing with multiple emotions with my religion and and the and also mourning the loss of strangers because the reality is these could be our kids. When I think the problem is that the everyday person who's anti-gun reform does not believe that this could happen to them or 100%. their kids. Can I, so can I yeah. ask you, um, do you do active shooter training at your school? No. We don't either. Really, We kind of get some information and know your exits kind of stuff. <clears throat> do Have you looked around your classrooms and your office space and mm-hmm. your buildings and thought, where would I go yep. if I heard something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. After Parkland, I uh, I did a lot of thinking about, you know, what where would the students go? I mean, we get memos about what to do. It's not that people well, are talking like, about it. Run, run, uh, run, hide, fight. Yeah. Whatever. Ohio, Ohio State University did a great video that a lot of schools use. Uh, but there's that. So today I was at my desk and I have a big window and I kept hearing this thumping and it made me like jump. Like, what is that noise? What is that bang? And I couldn't figure it out. And so I'm working along. All of a sudden, in my window, and I'm on the second floor, here's a harness set of thighs outside my window. And it was the window washers working their way down the building. <laughs> but I was like, ah! <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, go, oh, okay. So I that would freak me out. But it freaked me out. But I couldn't hear the banging. And I was, but I paused, like, okay. No, that's just like something upstairs. or And what it was, it was them bouncing off the walls. But it was a different sound. But it made me pause. And one of the th- things that you go through is, is that a desk? Is it a chair? Is it someone walking weird? Is it gunshots? Mm-hmm. What? It, like, it's, it's in your mind. And I have definitely, in my classrooms and in my office, looked around and thought, okay, what would I do? Yeah. And I don't even want to say what I would do because I'm going to want to listen and be like, I don't know how to get her. <laughs> you know? It's but I have a plan. Yeah, I so yeah, we do. And I so after the shooting happened, there's a lot, you know, the media was attacking, you know, left wing media was attacking the NRA. And I, I knew nothing about the NRA. Honestly, I didn't understand how devoted Americans are to their guns. I did not realize this was such a controversial issue. Again, I've been living head in the sand. So here's me. I'm a I'm a definite I mean, there's no doubt I'm an optimist. So I thought to myself, oh, the NRA this time, I mean, they're going to use their power and they're going to do something positive with it. They've got a lot of money <laughs> and a lot of power. And I mean, they're clearly going to come out and say, you know, whatever it is, it may not be what, you know, liberals are at requesting, but it's going to be something good. So I s- searched their website. I read everything about them. Then I signed up for the emails. I followed them on Facebook and Twitter 
And they didn't make a public statement about Parkland for probably 48 hours. And the first post they they said that they did um, was a picture of a billboard that said, kill the NRA. Someone had put on a billboard, kill the NRA. And, and they were like, they're coming after us. Then when they did their first press conference was when their VP of communications, the woman yeah. Dietrich or whatever her name is, said, I'm going to say this nice and slow so you can all hear it. The media loves mass shootings. And I was just horrified. And yet. <laughs> horrified. They just had their biggest fundraising quarter in 15 years. Yeah. And my husband said this to me because he had done some research on after what had happened after Sandy Hook. And after Sandy Hook, what actually happened was... Um, NRA donations tripled because everyone was so fearful of losing their guns. And again, I'm just so sad that the NRA doesn't use that money and power to do something good. I mean, they don't want any legislation on anything. No, they take money from Russia and use that to pour it into a campaign because of Citizens United laws that were passed that allow companies to do that. And so they are one of the biggest, they were one of the biggest con uh, contributors to the campaign of our current administration. And if you go watch uh, NRA TV, just watch one video. I mean, if you're an, if you're a person who believes in evidence, after 10 seconds, you're going to be horrified. It's all propaganda. It's it's so dangerous and it scares the crap out of me how many people believe it. I mean, people I love really believe they don't even believe that the proposed legislation is what people really are proposing. They really believe that someone's going to come to your house and remove all your guns. Coming, af coming after Dave's guns. They're well, coming after you. And it's not even that, that they believe that. It's that they're making their members believe well, that. Well, yes, exactly. And Their members do believe it, And though. the people that they're really protecting are not the people who are posting these memes. The people they're protecting are the gun makers. Exactly. And, the, and, the, and that's what's so... Like, you're being had. Do you mm -hmm. not see how had you're being? Yeah. This is crazy. It's it's ridiculous. Well, I mean... It, but, we, they, but they still have... I forget what the number... What the, like, it's... I, the ones that make me feel better when I see, like, okay, yeah, <clears throat> they have X number of members, but when you compare it to, like, these other groups have, you know, three times as many members, these this many more members, that's reassuring to me. Yeah. I forget what the exact numbers are, but... I've seen a lot of comparisons to show like this is a tiny, they're loud, like there's a loud, um, you ever been to a restaurant and there's that loud asshole just like yelling at the waitress and refusing the tip mm -hmm. and but, like, I feel like it's that guy and a restaurant full of people who are like, would you just sit down and shut the fuck up and let me eat my meal in peace. I feel like the NRA is that one loud guy who's being a jerk to everyone else and everyone knows it, but nobody ever actually escorts him out of the building. Well, if you look at the Gallup polls with the basic questions, if we could get these basic questions on a ballot and not leave it up to senators and Congress. Or and being bought and paid for. Exactly. We would have such a stronger gun legislation. Because if you look at Gallup polls, when they ask the questions as is, we talk to everyday Americans, do you support expanded background checks? for gun purchases. It's, it's something like 98% of Americans support enhanced background checks. Um, red flag laws, even those, that's something around like 78%. Arming teachers, that's only about 30% of people think it's a good idea to arm teachers. Right. So, but we're not getting the question. This We don't have, we can't use our voices in that way. It's, it's whoever is in office and what they're going to do. And that's Which is why... Which is why November matters. Midterms matter so much. And you need to register to vote. And then you need to vote. You can vote absentee. In a lot of places you can vote early. Maybe you can vote early. Mm -hmm. But if you are of voting age and can vote, you have got to vote, especially in the midterms. And ultimately, this this issue of gun violence, I, I went so deep into studies and research and the data and... It is a public health crisis. And every major health organization, American uh, Medical Association, American Pediatrics Association, they are very clear and firm that gun violence is a public health epidemic and we need to do something about it. We need tighter gun laws. Um, so it really irritates me when uh, people say, 
Well, what are some of the things they say? Like, well, what are you going to do? Oh, heroin's illegal. <laughs> or um, what other ones do they say about things that are illegal but we still do? Uh, like, cars. What are you going to do? You're going to remove all the cars off the road? Oh, yeah, cars are more deadly. You're going to have to take all the cars away. You know what's interesting? I looked into the stats on that, and in 2017, um, we had 3,800. It might have been 3,700. I don't direct quote me but it was right around there 37 to 3800 um i'm sorry thousand deaths caused by motor vehicle accident and gun violence gun deaths deaths by gun with thirty five thousand. it's almost comparable and when you look back at history in the 50s before there were seat belts before there were speed limits and safety exactly. laws and all of this stuff it was much higher but they changed the law and they made cars safer so now there's a, a much smaller amount of of car deaths. In fact, Gretchen, I have a study on that. <laughs> um, okay, cars. In that, from it took about forty years. It was like a forty year movement, basically. But it was a physician, and his name was Fletcher Woodward, and he said we. It, it, there was all the research was on the driver. A physician, his name was Fletcher Woodard, Woodward. He said, okay, we have to stop focusing our data on the driver. Like, what? You know, because we, we were putting too much too much attention on the individual. And we need to put, we need to focus our attention on the car, the product, and the environment. Wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> you mean it's not cars that kill people. It's people that kill people. Yes. Only he went, actually, maybe it's actually the cars. Yes. So actually that... That was the, the, so the MBA lobby said that exact quote. They said, cars don't kill people, people kill people. And we're hearing this with the guns. Guns don't kill people, people kill we people. Hear it regularly. Yes. So then another physician said, okay, we've spent too much time worrying about the cause of accidents. Let's focus on the cause of the injury. So this uh, Dr. Harper said, okay, we're going to recommend seatbelts, padding in the dashboards, and removing some knobs that were coming undone and hitting people in the face and causing lethal injuries. They probably looked wicked cool, though, in those old 50s cars. They looked really cool until sure they, they did. penetrated your brain matter. Then it was bad, but right. in the moment, it was pretty neat. So when when they, after they did this, the death rate from motor vehicle accidents fell by 90%. And we continue to have, we have a, an entire committee of car safety. I mean, that's why we keep having these car seat regulations. Right. Where your car seat is no good after six right. years or something like that because they do crash testing on car seats. They're constantly making car seats better. Um, they we have we we have drunk driver legislation. We have seatbelt laws, speed limits, crash um, surveillability uh, survivability standards, motor vehicle helmet laws, inspections, minimum age for drinking, um, driver education programs, licensing, right turns on red laws. <laughs> I mean, we have. And, and we have surve- and insurance and insurance and you have to register your car and we have surveillance on all of these um, issues with the car. OK, so, yes, car death is slightly higher than gun death. But think about the number of cars and their usage compared to I mean, the opportunity for death in a car is much greater statistically than gun. I was very much um, a car seat nerd like my kids we're faced forever we're in five point harnesses forever willa is still in a high back booster because that's how it fits her best i'm really kind of anal about that and i never judge anyone else out loud i have thoughts because i'm like you know what if your decision on this turns out to be a bad one it's not me or my kid that's going to suffer because of it. It's going to be you and your kid. So if this is what you feel comfortable doing, then go for it. I don't feel comfortable doing that. So with guns, those bad decisions impact other people. And that's where my, that's where I get really vocal on stuff is that when it's, when it could impact my kid, when your decision will could impact my family, then I'm going to be pissed. If your decision is only going to impact your family, kind of the same thing with, with vaccines knocking down herd immunity hurts people other than yourself right exactly and and i think and and i again i think this is another reason why i'm very vocal about this issue because this very much could be my kid it could be your kid it could be anyone that i know and loves kid in fact those kids in port uh portland in florida that i don't even know i my heart still is so heavy for them and their families because 
this shouldn't happen to kids. It, it shouldn't just, happen. To, it shouldn't should, happen to anybody. Yeah. I mean, it shouldn't happen at the church. It, it should shouldn't like, happen at the the um, concert that it happened at. It just people shouldn't be shot dead. Right. When they're not at war. Right. And even okay. then, I don't even like war. I don't so. like war either. Totally with you. So the thing is about about the cars is that we have surveillance and we have research, but by contrast with the guns, in um, I think it was 1990. Surveillance and research federal funding for gun violence prevention research was halted after gun lobbyists after the gun lobby prevented it. So we have not had a federal surveillance or infrastructure on gun research prevention. So we don't even know. People are like, "Oh, do this, do that." Well, it would be great to have some data to know about the con- the car seat comparison and herd immunity. So the same argument was taking place with the smoking and the tobacco lobby. We knew. I mean, we have such strong research that smoking is the number one preventable cause of death, period. We have so much research now on smoking that we know that even third hand smoke, which is you could not you could never smoke or in the same room as your child. But if you held your child or you were near your child with smoke on your clothing, that also increases their risk of all disease and death. So we know that. Yet still, it was such a, a tremendous act to get certain smoking laws in. But what actually tipped um, the balance for the smoking was the, the the rights of non-smokers. And that's where I think we're at with guns because I think now people are saying, okay, fine, you know what? Have your gun, but now your gun's affecting my risk. And even having guns, so the, all this research that I read, more guns equals more death, it equals more homicide, it equals more suicide. Even in if you look at all other variables, if there's a gun in the house and the person is depressed, a suicide is significantly more likely to complete w- to complete with access to a gun. I mean, if you just think about that as a logical person, that makes sense. Hmm, having kind of a rough day. I mean, I know suicide is, you know, it's its own separate topic, but a gun is much more final than maybe some other methods. So I, I think the rights of non-gun owners or even gun owners, but who want more legislation, it can tip the balance to the NRA. I hope. Well, and the other thing is that I feel like I know so many gun owners who are sensible people. Me too. Who, but the knee jerk reaction is, don't take away guns. Yay, NRA, Second Amendment, blah, blah. But if you start saying, well, do you think this person should have a gun? Do you think this person should have a gun? Do you think this person? Well, no, well, no. Okay, but right now they can. And there's nothing to stop them from getting it. And there's not even any barriers to get it or there's these low barriers that make it it's just a, a barrier in name only so well there's studies things. that look at parents beliefs on um their guns their the safety of their guns like their guns are locked up and their children's access to them the parents believe wholeheartedly that their kids aren't touching the guns and they can't access them but then they surveyed the kids and it was i i don't have it right in front of me but the the difference between what the parents thought and what was actually happening, it was astonishing that the kids do know how to access the guns. They can access the guns and they are accessing the guns uh, despite the parents' belief. I'm sure that, I won't say his name, but the Sandy Hook, that right. mother believed she those guns were safe. But she gave them to him and she gave him access to them and she just assumed that nothing bad would ever happen. And that's the problem. Uh, and then the other thing is that people say, oh, well, wh- what about knives? And I'm, this guy said it to me when we were in D.C. We already talked about it, But people have said it a lot with the knives. And my response to that is a knife is not going to kill the exact people that were killed at the Las Vegas Strip Massacre. 58 people. And how many were wounded? 546 from a 32nd floor nearby hotel room. That's impossible with a knife. I don't care. From a 32nd floor hotel room, maybe if you accidentally dropped it out the window and it happened to accidentally fall on someone, it might accidentally kill a person. Maybe, yes. And that takes a lot of, there's a lot of like physics and statistics that would have to go into that to make it happen at that exact moment. Exactly. So. And, and the, so there was the Waffle House shooting and. Oh, yeah. The guy who, um, James Shaw is the name of the man who 
I, I loved his interviews. He was like, don't call me a hero. Like I was trying to save my own life because I realized it was happening. And because he was able to get the gun away from that guy and throw over the counter, he saved who knows how many other lives. But he's been saying, I'm not a hero. They raised someone uh, raised a bunch of money for him. He said, great, turned around and paid for the funerals of the four victims. Mm. And he's done all this. You know who said nothing about that? The NRA. The NRA, the president. Nobody has said anything because you know what? It was a black man without a gun. Yeah. It was a good guy without a gun who was not white. It doesn't fit their narrative. Mm-hmm. So there has been not one mention. Yeah. I I didn't follow that one because um, I actually had tried to quit news and um, <laughs> and I also quit Facebook for a month. And the only reason why I rejoined is because <laughs> I have to organize teacher appreciation week and it was just much easier on Facebook. But now I feel much more aware of what's going on in the world. That's one of my things about I've seen a lot of people quitting Facebook almost to a person with the with the exception of you. I think a lot of people that have quit Facebook have left are the not the ones who are in charge of their children's social schedules, their school events, other things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's that is a the people who are like, I just quit Facebook. I don't need it anymore. And it just I saw one today. And it's a guy who doesn't have kids who's like, whatever, I don't need this. I'm like, yeah, of course you don't, because you're not managing yeah. a million different things like a, like a woman would be doing. You know, you're not managing this. The social calendars, the like the we do a lot of our stuff for the PTO on Facebook because that's where people are. Mm-hmm. And to replicate that at this point in the year is going to be really damn hard. Mm-hmm. And how else do you get the instant response that we need to get that stuff together? So it just. Well, I posted last night now we're getting off topic but it's <laughs> interesting last night i believe i don't know i did my post late it was 8 30 or 9 p.m yeah it was late and it's not even 24 hours later and i almost have every i i and i requested probably 30 items for donation to um and i i probably have at least 20 of them yeah in one post Whereas I would never been able to organize that without Facebook. That's that's the reality. You would have to send a, a sign up sheet home yeah. to every kid in the school, mm-hmm. hope that it came back. There'd be the parent who forgot to bring it back and showed up with the wrong thing. Like it's just mm-hmm. that's how things are done. And I wish that there was a better alternative that we could all migrate to, you know. But it, we don't have it yet, and that's just the that's just the way it is. That's just how life is lived, particularly when you have little kids. Can I also say? Which is off topic, but so I, I think you. Uh, this is a here, here's one that's on topic. The other thing about Facebook is that when your kid does come home and say, "I want a play date with that's Susie true. Jones," yeah, yeah, you first of all you get to figure out who the parent is, and you get to see, oh, are all your profile pictures of you with a friggin' AR fifteen? Maybe I'll host, right? You know, <laughs> like you get a little vibe for the parents, get an idea, and just be like, hmm, huh, well, that's something, yeah, and. And you know what? And if anyone says, oh, you're just judging people by their pictures, you're goddamn right. I'm judging people by their pictures. And if I see things like that, I don't want my kid going to their house without me. (laughs) It's it's true. It is true. It's very helpful for everything. I mean, kids in Cameron's class, I know because I connected with them through Facebook. So I know. But I did have to take a break from it because I was finding... This gun issue had me so wound. How and was how was it to take a break? So tell us from the other side, hmm. Kelly, what it was like. It was it was nice. Overall, I actually have not been a person that gets too rattled by Facebook. I find it enjoyable. It's kind of like my thing I do when I want to relax. Other people I've heard other narratives about Facebook and what it, it makes people feel jealous and this. I don't, I've not really had that experience. Sometimes I get annoyed, if anything, because I think like, oh my gosh, seriously, you know, but other than that, I've never found it that toxic until recently with the guns. And I think it probably was, I know it was before, but I, again, I'm a reasonable person and you know, I am a very, I don't get, I can try to see both sides of every story. The gun though, the gun situation I don't see the other side of it in any way. In fact, I have taken such a firm stance on this that people in my family who who posted derogatory memes about uh, about those kids in Parkland, I have I I don't want to associate with myself with them, and I know that's so severe. But the reality is is that those people, if that's how they're going to respond to those kids, that 
is how they would respond if this happened at my kid's school. And I can't, I'm disgusted by how people are responding to those poor kids who have that is such a tragedy. That's going to be an adverse childhood experience. It's going to follow them for the rest of their life. And to attack those kids like that is despicable to me. So here's my story to go along with that. That actually has everything. Actually has a, this is going to bring it all together. <laughs> the turkey. About the Purdue. Turkey? No, the turkey. My turkey. The window. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went to Boston for vac for a few days over vacation, and on the way back we are driving 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 and i'm looking down reading my kindle and all of a sudden i see out of the corner of my eye i'm i'm not driving i'm reading my kindle in the passenger seat just to clarify I'm not an idiot dave is driving <laughs> and i see out of the corner of my eye something and i look up just in time to see a big stupid ass turkey hit our windshield going 75 miles an hour not the turkey. We were going 75 miles an hour. The turkey was going like two miles an hour because it was stupid. <laughs> and boom and smashed into the car. And I had glass, little shards of glass all over my Kindle and on my jeans and my coat. And like my I was wearing these jeans here and see how the, the cuff kind of like folds up at the bottom because they're old jeans. It was all filled with glass. But the turkey never came through the window because the glass because of safety regulations, mm -hmm. is made to shatter and not collapse. Mm -hmm. So pulled over immediately, and Dave gets out and checks. But the girls immediately, both of them, burst into tears and were hysterical. Like, oh, Mom, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I'm totally fine. The glass did what it was supposed to do. Turkey's gone. We're going to be fine. Didn't come all the way through. It's going to be fine. Let's see how this glass does this. It's because there's like plastic kind of on either side to keep all the glass together. It's really, it's going to be fine. And I drove home. It was like dusk. And the rest of the night I wore my sunglasses just in case. The, when the, <laughs> it was a deep, deep hole. You have to post the picture. I'll post a picture. <laughs> and so it was a deep hit. And just in case we still had two hours left to drive home on the highway so just in case any more glass flew out or anything shook loose i did i left my sunglasses on to protect my eyes that was my biggest concern but they cried and were so upset and were upset for days and all i could think was this mm -hmm. was a stupid ass highway turkey mm -hmm. imagine what it would be like for them to be in a classroom where the windows were shot out, where people actually were hurt, where people actually died, mm -hmm. where they had to step over their dead teachers to get out or their dead classmates, like these Parkland students mm -hmm. who are older or the Sandy Hook students who were younger. Mm -hmm. This, they will talk about this turkey until they are 80 years old, mm -hmm. I'm sure, because it was like such a formative little moment in our lives. And, I, and we were fine. Car, we got the windshield replaced. The The car is fine. I am fine. I vacuumed off my pants when we got home and Dave vacuumed out the vents and stuff. So we're good. But the sound of that turkey and the sight of it hitting, Inger was like, I thought it was a cannonball or something. Like she thought someone had thrown a bowling ball at us because it's stupid turkey. But I was like, this is just a turkey. Can you imagine? So when we talk about, and I said this when we talked to Sarah, when you talk about these are the people who were killed in this shooting. There were 14 people killed, 15 people killed. Yeah, 15 people killed. How many other students have to sleep with the light on, mm -hmm. are jumping at loud noises, would freak at the window washer ba banging on my window? Mm -hmm. Or simply ever. can't even function in society. I mean, they were at a, a developmental age where something traumatizing is, is it will have negative effects on their health for the rest of their life. Yeah. I mean, and I, when I graduated nursing school, I was 22 years old. I trained for four years to be a nurse. I trained for death, life, and all that it's involved. And I remember the first code, my first patient who coded, I didn't sleep for five days. I was so, tra I was so traumatized by that. And I trained for, I was a professional. Of course, you trained, you probably researched, you yeah. had read all the papers, you had written, you did all the work, you knew exactly yeah. what to expect. I worked in a hospital, I mean, this isn't that unusual to have someone die in a hospital. But these kids were just in class. Yeah. So to get that low because you're anti-gun reform, and again, you're uneducated about the gun reform because if you sit down and just have a conversation with anybody who thinks that they're completely against any kind of gun reform, they're not. 
They just, they don't even know what they believe in or not because they haven't even taken the time. And they're that willing to put all of our kids and our family members' lives at risk. Because again, it could happen at a church, it could happen at a school, it could happen at a concert. And I mean, it could be a suicide. That's the other thing. The 30,000 people, um, no, it's not 30,000. I think it's 20,000 die from suicide on average from gun. If you could see Kelly, she ha- she must oh my have gosh. two dozen I pieces have of paper papers. that she's going through looking for all her statistics. I have a, a non-partisan evidence-based literature review of gun violence on covering every topic, suicide, um, domestic violence, it's and oh self defense because the big argument is oh I need my guns for gu- gu- self defense guns are not used by mi- million times each year in self defense that is false that's a false narrative that the NRA wants you to believe uh, we okay the claim that millions of Americans um, annually self def- use guns for self defense is invalid there's been plenty of research to to show that it's suicide or of course um violence which are criminals right and it's and, and it's a law-abiding citizen it is rare for a law-abiding citizen to shoot a criminal i mean we have we have stats on that it and then the other thing is that fire firearms are used more often to intimidate than in self-defense i'm not saying we should get rid of all firearms i do support all the legislation which is expanded background checks um uh red flag laws mm-hmm Red flag laws just make sense. And red fl- the other thing with red flag laws and um, the Lake family that happened, that, that's when that happened here. It was quite a while ago now. But there was a man who had a restraining order against his ex-wife and two children and was told to, they were told to remove all his guns, but they gave his guns to like his father. And there's no repository for those. Instead of just taking the guns and keeping them, the, so the father, so he's able to access his guns and he ended up killing his ex-wife and two children before taking his own life. And that's the kind of thing that, okay, so great, you took the guns away, but it's like if I take away candy from Willa and then set it on the table in front of her, she technically doesn't have it, but she still has access to it. Mm-hmm. You know, if I leave the room, she'll probably take the candy. So <clears throat> that's one. The other one that I think, I think that there should absolutely be uh, registration, a license, and insurance. Me too. Uh, wholeheartedly. Because the problem is we don't know how many guns are out there, who owns them, and what types of guns they have. I mean, I know people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I won't give any more detail than that. That have hundreds, hundreds of guns. In fact, machine weapons are banned in the United States. But that's that, there's a loophole around that. You can still purchase um, antique machine guns. I know people personally who own multiple machine guns. So I think that people are very naive to how loose the laws are around guns. And we, and so again, yes, cars kill a couple more thousand. It's not the car that kills, but the death by motor vehicle accident kills a couple more thousand people per year than death by gun. Right. I mean, but, and, but we have like no laws on the gun. So if we put some regulation around the guns, I'm not saying let's remove all guns. That's not what I'm saying. That's not even realistic. But if we just put a little bit of regulation, think about how much of a dent we could put in that number. Right. Or, you know, like the insurance piece and not that long, I will have a teenager who will have a license. And that means that my insurance will go up because mm-hmm. there are risks with have you know, this turkey thing was the only claim we've made in 15 years of joint so insurance. did your insurance cover the oh you? yeah it was like we had to pay 25 dollars because the, the, the glass company covers part of the deductible so it was 25 bucks so oh, cool. 25 bucks we have a new windshield it's all good and but when ingrid starts driving our insurance rates are going to go sky high because we have a young and experienced driver with no frontal lobe completely developed but she also has to learn how to drive and i am very big on that but also she's gonna wear a seatbelt. one of my friends her lives in florida and at her son's high school she picked him up and drove off and minutes later another car of students leaving that high school crashed into a tree in front of the school leaving the high school in a residential area there were three kids in the car one was wearing a seatbelt, two weren't guess who walked away guess who died mm-hmm. immediately yeah. honor student senior in high school honor student 
wasn't buckled up. And those all the and those seatbelts are the result of research mm-hmm. that said, guess what? Here's a novel idea. Mm-hmm. Let's try tying you into the car. There's a great series. I should see if I can find it that I saw once because I, I get really frustrated when I read these articles about and it kind of goes back to the car seat thing. Like it doesn't impact me. It impacts you and your family and everything else. But I'll, whenever I read an article about a motor vehicle accident, I always read them like, mm-hmm. and they always say wasn't was wearing a seatbelt. Mm-hmm. And most of the fatalities that happen around here will say was not wearing a seatbelt. There was one who was a teacher who was killed. And I, you know, the um, all the cars that happen in accidents end up over here. Did you know that? that it's like I can practically see it. Oh, from yeah, my house. because you have There's a, a tow yard. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I don't live like in the sense. <laughs> this is typical Bangor. Well, it's nearby. Like a nice neighborhood also with a tow yard. I can't see it from outside her front window. But if you look straight through the other person's house, you kind of can. Oh, I can? Okay. So anyway, I remember walking by and seeing the car and recognizing it from the news because I saw it in the news and thought, that's a walk away accident. But she wasn't wearing a seatbelt. And so she was killed, even though it was clearly supposed to be a walk away accident if she'd been buckled up. And there was this great series that some news like local news channel did out in Illinois or Indiana, some little thing called um, room to room to live or something like that. And I should find it because it was really powerful. And they looked at all these accidents where people weren't wearing their seatbelts and they were like, look, and she would get in the car and be like, I should be fine. Mm -hmm. If I'd been buckled in the, the car is built to like take the, the sustain the force of the crash and to protect the passenger. But it doesn't mean shit if you don't wear your seatbelt. So wear your seatbelt and vote. Those two things. <laughs> and well, vaccinate. Well, I mean, this is... we, <laughs> And we know this because we have surveillance data that we track federally and at state and at the state level, which we don't do with guns. So every idea that's thrown around that, oh, well, let's try this. No, 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 no. Don't do expanded background checks. Ban video games. It's the video games. <sighs> oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't do expanded background checks. Arm the teachers. All of this actually just makes me more mad because we have a have had a ban on federal surveillance of gun violence because of lobbyists, which that is absurd to me. This should be a nonpartisan issue. I hate that this is a partisan issue. I had no idea it was a partisan issue until I was into it, obviously. And it's just it's wild to me that we're putting money over people. And that's what we're doing. I mean, don't I know Second Amendment. I hear. Well, it's the Second Amendment. Okay. Yeah, this is not what they meant. Yeah, I mean, so what? Okay, so what's next? We're going to arm all the teachers. So now our schools are war zones. So then we're going to have to arm people everywhere we are. And then those guns, they're going to outgun, the gunman's going to outgun the armed teacher because the armed teacher's not going to walk around with an AR-15. So the other, so then what? Everyone's going to have AR-15s? Is this a society we really want to live in? I mean, it's, it's absurd. Except for at the NRA rally that the vice president will be at, there are no guns allowed for his safety. And so there's like this great thing where we're like, well, wait a minute. I thought you said it was much safer if a, if a room full of good guys with guns right. isn't a safest place for the vice president. Then why would you ban guns on that? One of the things too, like so Moms Demand, which is an organization that I love, um, really kind of started because back in the 80s, it was Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And that was kind of the model that they've used for Moms Demand because when the mothers got fired mm-hmm. up, then drunk driving laws started to change. So mm-hmm. that gives me some hope. Mm-hmm. And the other part is that why not just try? Like, what's the harm That's in the trying? Thing. That's the thing. Isn't it worth just one, even if it was one life, so one life's not worth a shot, why wouldn't we just try? Right. And this and it's not going to affect 95% of people. And you, like you just said about the guns, uh, about about more guns. So there's, there are multiple studies, and I, I mean, you can, I'll send you a link to this if you really want it. <laughs> Across states, more guns equals more violent deaths to children. Across states, more guns equals more unintentional firearms death. Across states, more guns equals more f- violent female deaths. It, so adding guns to schools is the absolute worst idea I've ever heard of, just so that people can make money and sell more guns. That's what this is about. Exactly. Because people want to make the gun manufacturers who also fund the NRA they, and who also fund the politicians, they all want money. And when there's easy access to guns with low barriers, you can sell more of something. That's like anything. Look at oxycodone, oxycotton. OK, here's the other thing. I've been told, oh, well, heroin, Kelly, heroin's illegal, but everyone look at the epidemic. OK, but then what let's if, trace the roots. Let's here. chase the roots. If we could end the supply of heroin. 
yeah, we wouldn't solve the current addiction. We wouldn't solve everyone's addiction because that's a disease that we're going to have to treat. But we we would absolutely prevent new cases of addiction. There's no access to it. Look at oxycodone and oxycontin. We have now regulations in the state of Maine and other states are following suit that regulates how much providers can prescribe in a month, milli equivalents of oxycodone and oxycontin or narcotics in general. It's not just those two drugs. And we've seen a dramatic decline in prescri- prescriptions of those drugs. But what? There's been a, but there's been a big increase in heroin overdoses. Yes, because there's access but the, to but heroin. But the seed of it was was overprescribed prank over. Oh, pres- pre- Scribing painkillers. Pa- painkillers. And so now the people are addicted. It's a disease. They need to. It's just like if you needed to breathe. That's how the addiction to, um, to an opiate is. And so then they go to heroin because heroin's still accessible. We haven't shut down the heroin. I don't. That's a whole other thing. I don't know how we're going to do that. But if we could, my point is, if we could, <laughs> we could reduce new, right. new, new addictions. Right. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's complicated, and I'm not going to deny the fact that the gun uh, violence prevention isn't complicated. But to say you're going to do nothing is completely unacceptable to me. To say you're just going to sit back on your couch and not make a single change in this gun reform is just unacceptable to me. You got to be for something. We're going to make changes, right? You got to be for something. Changes are going to happen. Absolutely. Even if you if you say, "Oh, it's the mental health," which we hear a lot. Okay, great. Then fight for mental health. If you if you don't believe it's the guns and you don't want to fight for guns, no, because we can't let the poor people get the health insurance. Kelly, come on! I know that's <laughs> my thing. That's my that's the hypocrisy right there. All right, Kelly, you did a deep breath. Yeah, I'm actually feeling better. Good. I was in a bad spot with this. <laughs> this is her in a good spot. She knew. And people who've been <laughs> listening for six months. Oh my gosh, we came. We would <laughs> before we record. I'd come over and we were we did a lot of quite a few guests during this time. I think Sarah Smiley, when it first happened, was coming to speak as a guest on the show, and I was so distraught. I didn't even know how we were going to do the interview because I was so upset about what had happened in Parkland. I think I just watched like all the videos, and I somehow managed to get through it. And then, of course, Sarah Karen. She said one thing, and I started bawling. So I'm, oh, in yeah. much, I'm in a much better space emotionally. But a lot of people heard her talk and cried. There was, oh, I got gosh, multiple was... reports of that. Um, so are we ready to go into favorite things? Yes. Want me to go first? So my favorite thing this week. First of all, did you see the forecast for Wednesday? Yes. It is going to be 80 degrees here, which is awesome. And this is the season that I really like having smoothies. So my favorite thing is a stick blender and I have a, it's mine's a Cuisinart stick blender and I have this metal like thermos, um, it's made by thermos, it's like this metal like to go cup with a straw and everything and it fits my stick blender perfectly. So I love to make a smoothie with, I just throw in a bunch of frozen fruit, like pineapple, mango, blueberries, stuff like that. Um, and then I, and a banana and then I add well, I throw in the frozen fruit. I add hot water till it covers it. And then that balances the temperature. And I blend that all up. And then I throw in a banana to thicken it and blend that all up. And then I walk around my big giant vat of smoothie and love it. But I love my stick blender because it is so easy to bang out a smoothie, snap off the end, rinse it under the faucet, and then set it to dry. And it's and we're good to go for the next time. So I love my stick blender. I'll have to check it out. I so my favorite thing kind of goes along with what we're talking about but I love factchecker. factchecker.org <laughs> and if you haven't ever used it you should totally try because you see these things cycle around all the time on wherever social media or people just telling you to to your face and you can just do a quick fact check get your information in fact the fact checker is inconclusive on if banning the assault the semi-automatic weapons actually did reduce mass shootings when we because we did used to have a a, assault weapons ban assault weapons ban so it's not like this is a novel thing we used to have it that's the other thing but it was it's it is a little inconclusive on the data but again it's because our surveillance is poor and we're not tracking very well but um the fact checker on that is that that's it's not conclusive but that nevertheless fact checker is awesome yes and you should totally use it 
All right. So we will have we have a bunch to put in the show notes this week. We're going to have a bunch of research and uh, maybe I can just get a get your um, your yeah, lit you review. Yeah, you guys can use my Google Drive. <laughs> and we'll send it. Yeah, we'll do a link to her Google Drive and her lit review and all that. And um, if you have enjoyed listening to us, please tell a couple friends and tell them to listen to us, too. You can also leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. You can email us if you have any questions at balancingchaospodcast at gmail.com or you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. And until next week, bye. bye.